From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Friday, March 19th, 2021. Over 4.2 billion in cybercrime losses reported to FBI in 2020. Cyber crooks went on a crime spree last year, bilking us out of 20% more money than the year before. According to the annual report from the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center, IC3, as crooks get bolder, they've pumped up the largest ransomware demand to $30 million. In fact, ransomware payments have nearly tripled. But although ransomware tends to dominate headlines, it's dwarfed by the money lost in business email compromise, BEC, attacks, a sum that's 64 times greater than that raked in by ransomware. If you lump in spoofing, which is often part of BEC, total losses were close to $2.1 billion. Fake iPhone charger blows up in researcher's face. An iPhone charger blew up in the face of cybersecurity reporter Andrea Stropa. Stropa had borrowed the exploding charger from a friend and discovered that it was a knockoff of the Apple product that his friend bought off an unofficial channel on Instagram. It wasn't an isolated incident. Stropa and his colleagues at cybersecurity research firm Ghost Data Team discovered that there are illicit Chinese factories selling knockoffs that look identical to the Apple products, but which are sold for prices discounted up to 10 times the cost of the bona fides. Stropa's friend, believing an ad that said it was an original Apple product, bought the charger for about a 25% discount off the $19 price for a genuine one. Taxpayers attacked with Trojan inflicting phishing campaign. The U.S. tax filing deadline has been pushed to May due to the pandemic, but fishers have already launched a tax-themed campaign to trick people into downloading malicious macros that inflict both Netwire and Remco's remote access Trojans, those are rats. On Thursday, Cyber Reason published research analyzing phishing document samples that, once opened, blur the content and prompt victims to enable macros and editing in order to view the text. Woe to those who fall for it. If they accept a heavily obfuscated macro, drops a malicious DLL payload, a dropper for one of the two Trojans, in the temp directory. British man busted for selling homemade guns on the dark web. A Southampton man has been sentenced to eight years after police discovered a firearm-making workshop in his home. A raid uncovered chemicals and powders that could be used to create explosives, homemade parts for firearms, templates, a functioning homemade stun gun, and a construction guide for a MAC-10 submachine gun. The prosecutor, Tabitha McFarlane, said that 48-year-old Pascal Norgild had demonstrated significant planning and that he had apparently tried to sell his creations on the dark web. And now a word from our sponsor, Trend Micro. The conversation between you and your board of directors is not always a walk in the park. With more cloud projects coming your way, it's time to change the conversation, to speak their language, and start paving the way for a secure future. For more, go to http colon forward slash forward slash trendmicro.com forward slash CISO. iOS developers targeted by new malware. Sentinel-1 researchers have discovered new malware that's targeting Apple developers in a supply chain attack that installs a macOS backdoor on the computers of iOS developers. It involves Xcode, a free integrated development environment, that's IDE, from Apple that allows developers to create applications that run on macOS, iOS, tvOS, and watchOS. Threat actors are increasingly creating booby-trapped versions of popular projects in the hope that they'll be incorporated into other developers' applications. When the apps are compiled, the poisonous component will then infect computers in a supply chain attack. In this case, the malware, called Xcode Spy, exploits the run script feature in the Xcode IDE. Yet more printing problems caused by Windows updates. Two days after Microsoft hurried out a fix for Windows 10 printer troubles caused by last week's Patch Tuesday update for older versions of Windows 10, it was warning of even more problems besides the blue screen of death. Microsoft had this to say on Wednesday. 
After installing updates released March 9th, 2021 or March 15th, 2021, you might get unexpected results when printing from some apps. The issues might include document elements printing as solid black or missing color boxes, such as barcodes, graphics, logos, or QR codes. Table lines might go missing, while alignment or formatting might be all screwed up. Microsoft said it expected a fix within a few days. China slaps LinkedIn with 30-day suspension over lax censorship. China says LinkedIn, the sole social network allowed to operate in the country, hasn't been censoring its posts strenuously enough. Its internet regulator is punishing the Microsoft-owned platform for failing to control objectionable posts circulating in the period around an annual meeting of China's lawmakers, according to three people briefed on the matter, which hasn't been made public. It's unclear exactly which material got LinkedIn into trouble. As punishment, Chinese officials are requiring LinkedIn to perform a self-evaluation and to offer a report to the internet regulator and to suspend new user signups inside China for 30 days. Google pays Uruguayan researcher $164,674 for cloud bug. Ezequiel Pereira a Uruguayan university student, has scored a juicy bounty of $133,337 for a remote code execution, that's RCE, bug he discovered in the Google Cloud Deployment Manager. It's the top prize in the 2020 Google Cloud Platform, GCP, bug bounty program, which paid out a total of $313,337, or triple the $100,000 pool the company created for the 2019 program. Google announced that six winners will share the money, which isn't a reward for a bug bounty per se, but rather an additional prize and recognition for submissions to Google's vulnerability reward program. It's quite a cherry to put on top of the cupcake, though. The additional prize Google paid to Pereira is on top of a $31,337 reward for the original report he submitted last year, meaning he made a total of $164,674 for discovering the RCE. If you're listening to this episode of Cybersecurity Headlines early enough, there's still time to join us for this week's CISO series video chat entitled Hacking Pen Testing, an hour of critical thinking to convert red team exercises into risk reduction. The conversation starts at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, but be sure to stick around after the hour to join in a series of impromptu one-on-one five-minute meetings where everyone will be randomly paired, speakers and audience alike. It's a great way to rethink pen testing and to network at the same time. Just head on over to CISOseries.com and click on the Register for Video Chats button to join in on the fun. See you there. I'm Lisa Vaz, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.